a jury in New York finding Donald Trump, the Republican presidential frontrunner by far, liable for sexually abusing and defaming writer E. Jean Carroll. The jury also awarding the for former magazine columnist nearly $5 million in damages to be paid by Mr. Trump. Carol walked out of the Manhattan courthouse just moments ago with her lawyer, who said that they are, quote, very happy with the jury's decision. Carol's lawsuit stemmed from an encounter between her and Trump in a New York department store dressing room in 1996, Bergdorf Goodman's, where she claims Donald Trump sexually assaulted her. Donald Trump just reacted on his social media platform, writing in all caps, quote, I have absolutely no idea who this woman is. This verdict is a disgrace, a continuation of the greatest witch hunt of all time, unquote. This all comes as Trump is facing another very serious case in New York City. Just last month, the former president pleaded not guilty to 34 felony charges related to hush money payments to adult film star and director Stormy Daniels, not to mention investigations by the Justice Department into January 6th and to those classified documents at Mar-a-Lago, not to mention the investigation by prosecutors in Fulton County, Georgia, who are looking into his attempt to flip Georgia, perhaps illegally, in the 2020 election. But let's go back to the first verdict. Let's get right to CNN's Kara Scannell outside the courthouse in New York. And Kara, this was pretty quick, and it was also, I think it was more money than she was originally asking for. Yeah, Jake, I mean, this verdict was returned just, or, just over two and a half hours of deliberations. That seemed extremely quick for a jury forum that had a number of questions that they had to answer. And the jury here found that Trump was liable for sexually abusing E. Jean Carroll. That's all related to her, you know, her story that she says Trump raped her in Bergdorf Goodman department store in the mid 1990s. And they also found that Trump defamed her when he made these statements on October 12th, saying that he did not know who Carol was. He said that her story was a hoax and that she was not his type. Now, over this, you know, the, there were seven days of testimony. The jury heard from 11 witnesses that Carol put on. Trump did not put on a defense, although the jury did see the video deposition of him. And that's something that Carol's team had argued would cut against him. And it seems that the jury did agree with that and find in that way. And they also awarded Carol $5 million in damages. Now, as this verdict was read just after 3 p.m. Eastern time today, you know, it was read by the judge's clerk. Carol was sitting there um, next, in between two of her attorneys. She was holding the hands of one of her attorneys. And when the question came of, you know, did they prove that, uh, the, Eugene Carroll proved that, that Trump had sexually abused her, and the answer was yes. You could see that she looked relieved. She was leaning forward at times. She, you know, exchanged smiles with one of her attorneys. Uh, and then the judge had excused the jury after they ran through the verdict, and he pulled each and every one of them, six men, three women. They all said that this was their unanimous verdict. Uh, you know, then Carroll was still uh, in the courtroom, and T Trump's attorney, Joe Tacopina, walked over to her, shook her hand. He also shook the hands of her attorneys. Uh, you know, it was it was a very civil uh, trial between both sides. They were both very respectful of each other, despite what was on the line. And we saw that continue through this final moment. And then, as you mentioned, Carol left. We're waiting for her to have a statement based on this verdict. I mean, it was, you know, she says this rape occurred 27 years ago. The jury agreed with her. And it, it was something she only came public with in 2019. And that lawsuit, that initial lawsuit, is still working its way through the system. She brought the second lawsuit under a new New York law, the Adult Survivors Act, uh, just in November. So, you know, certainly a big moment for her. And, you know, her lawyers had said to the jury that they weren't looking for a specific amount of money, that this was really about Carol getting her name back. Uh, so that, uh, I imagine we will hear a little bit from Carol about that, something she'd been fighting for. Uh, you know, we have not seen Trump's attorney, Joe Tacopina, leave the courthouse just yet. We're waiting to see if he's going to make any statements, if, they're, if they will move to appeal in this case. I mean, he previously asked for a mistrial. That is standard. That was uh, denied. But I'm sure we'll see some additional moves from them uh, and some, you know, potential legal decisions that were made and allowed by the judge in this case. They may look to challenge them. But a big win for E. Jean Carroll today, a long time coming for her. Uh, and as you said, just one of several different um, lawsuits and investigations that the former president is facing, Jake. So we should note that the jury had an option uh, to find him liable for rape, and they did not. Uh, they did find him liable... Uh, for sexual abuse and uh, for defamation. Now, he's on Truth Social uh, doing his all-caps thing. Maybe I, maybe I misunderstood. I thought the judge had told him not to do it. I mean, not that, not that under the Constitution that's the right 
uh, ruling, but I thought the judge had told him not to do that. Yeah, so Trump had been posting on True Social at the very start of this trial. And, you know, just to back up a moment, the judge made this jury anonymous, anonymous both to him and to the parties. And the reason he did that, he said, was because of some of the statements Trump has made, you know, even leading up to his indictment in the case brought by the Manhattan District Attorney's Office, because some of these statements, you know, were viewed as being, you know, calls for violence, calls for protest. So he wanted to protect the jury and, and, and as a result, protect the process here of this trial. So when Trump had made some posts on True Social, it was brought to the judge's attention. He warned Trump's attorney, you know, someone should talk to him because he could possibly be violating some statutes here. You know, he didn't get into details there, but, you know, people were talking that this could be, you know, is he suggesting there's jury tampering, witness tampering, you know, anything of just bringing additional attention to this. And Joe Tacopina, Trump Trump's lawyer said that he did talk to him, and we did see, um, t you know, uh, true social posts by Trump. Stop. He did make those comments in Ireland, but they weren't they weren't really raised as an issue uh, in this trial. And you know, the reason why the judge wanted him to stop is he wants to protect the jury and he wanted to protect the integrity of the trial so they wouldn't end up with a mistrial. And you know, that's where we saw the judge even telling the jury today, you can speak to anyone you want about this. You can identify yourself. He said, I would advise you not to. Um, he said, if you do decide to talk to someone, don't reveal the names of the other jurors uh, because he wants to protect them. I mean, he, he said, I would advise you not to speak now and not for a very long time. So it's something that he is concerned about given the, um, you know, the issues even in this case. I mean, this, the case here is about uh, e. Jean Carroll making this allegation, Trump's making those statements, and then E. Jean Carroll receiving numerous negative um, tweets, emails. She said she was sleeping with a gun in her bed because she was so concerned about her safety based on the um, reaction of some of Trump's followers. Uh, so that's something that I think was the judge was taking into consideration here. So obviously during uh, the case, um, E. Jean Carroll's attorney introduced that Access Hollywood tape of, of Donald Trump in, I think, 2006, uh, talking with Billy Bush about how if you're a star, you can get away with sexual assault, essentially, grabbing women by their, their genitals. In addition, I believe there, were, there was at least one, if not two other women who testified and claimed that Donald Trump had done similar things to them, right? Because there's this, con this context that there are more than a dozen women who have made similar allegations about Donald Trump. Who, t who testified exactly and what did they testify about? Yeah, so there were two women who testified. One of them is Jessica Lead. She said that she was sitting in first class on an airplane next to Donald Trump in 1979 or 1980, and she said that Trump just started groping her then. And um, the other person who testified, Natasha Stoinoff, she was a reporter for People magazine, and she said that she was down at Mar-a-Lago interviewing Trump for a story in 2005, and that he had lured her into a private room and then started kissing her forcibly. She was trying to push him off, and she said he only stopped when a Butler walked into the room. And in both of these women instances, the reason why Carol's attorneys called them is they wanted to show that this was a pattern. Both of these women said that Trump just started kissing them, just started groping them, just started coming on to them, and then only stopped when someone interrupted it or it was a, you know, a semi-public place. And the, another piece of their testimony was that they then went public with their stories, their allegations, right before the 2016 election. Trump was asked about them or himself brought it up on the campaign trail. And in both of those instances, he attacked the women, saying essentially that they weren't his type. So Carol's lawyers were using this to say to the jury, this was the pattern. Trump would make these semi-public assaults. If someone went public with it, he would then attack their their, um, you know, their looks and, and their credibility. And they said to the jury, you should look at this pattern. Now, the judge said the jury could consider that when they were evaluating whether Trump assaulted Carol. They could um, consider this as their review if they found that they believe those women by a preponderance of evidence, which the judge said was just over 50 percent. So he said they could consider it. He said if they didn't believe these women, they didn't have to consider it. But it was something that they were allowed to use in this case, and it could be a possible point of appeal for Trump's team. All right, Kara Scannell, thank you so much. Really appreciate it.